Now, as we all know, yeah, the vlog's back. And so is this series. Now, can you vlog like Casey Neistat using the Panasonic G7? And what do you have to do to get this kind of quality out of this camera? Now, the Neistat setup, of course, gets us the tilt swivel screen, which quite simply is just the best option you can have for vlogging. The G7 also comes with a tilt swivel screen. You want to take shots from up top, you just swivel it down. You want to take shots from down below, you just swivel it up. And even for situations where you are situated beside the camera, with a tilt swivel screen, framing still isn't a problem. Now the other factors are weight, size and price. And when it comes to weight, this is where the nice set setup really doesn't shine. It's quite simply very strenuous to hold this out in front of yourself at arm's length for more than a minute or two. In that regard, the G7 setup has the upper hand. It's like half to two thirds of the weight of the 70D setup. Now size-wise, people are just gonna see you coming with this from a mile away. And although the G7 is like only two thirds of the size of the 70D, pretty much it's gonna be the same way. Now price-wise, the 70D setup you're looking at with a 10 to 18 as Lens, the Rode Video Mic Pro on top, and the Joby Gorilla Pod Focus, brand new, that still goes for around $1550. If you're getting good used deals, you might be able to drop the price point to around $1250. Now, the G7 with the 12 to 32 pancake lens, the Rode Video Mic Pro on top, and also the Joby Gorilla Pod Focus, that's around $1150. Used deals might drop the price point to around about a grand. Now, the G7 with the 7 to 14, new, that goes for around $1700. Bucks. You might be able to drop the price point to $1500, but both the lens and the Gorilla Pod are in short stock right now as this video is produced, so sometime later down the road, there might be another $200 to $250 to be saved here. Now important to Neistat's style of vlogging, of course, is the super wide angle look. Now the 70D setup with the 10 to 18 on it on 10 millimeters, this is what you're getting. Now of course the budget lens, the 12 to 32 on the Panasonic G7 at 12 millimeters, which is what you're looking at right now, it's nowhere near as wide as the 10 millimeters of the Neistat setup. It still gives you a pretty decent angle to vlog at arm's length on a selfie stick. Now of course, if you just can't live without the super wide angle aesthetic, you can put the 7 to 14 on. Now this is what you're getting from the 7 to 14 on the Panasonic G7 at 7 millimeters. And of course the super wide angle is a great aesthetic for vlogging because vlogging is you and the world. The dynamics that shape that relationship. And of course an excellent visual representation of that is accomplished by the super wide angle because it simply shows a lot of the world around you with yourself in the center. So if you got the money and you do want to have the nice that wide angle look then the 7 to 14 is actually a lens you should check out because it's going to give you exactly that at a very very high quality. That's actually very comparable if not better than the 10 to 22 hourglass he's using. Now if you want to vlog like Neistat of course you want to zoom in while shooting. Now, of course since the Neistat setup prominently features a zoom lens it's actually super simple to get that effect. Still to state the blatantly obvious all you gotta do is zoom in while shooting. And since both the lenses I'm using for the G7 are zoom lenses, it's pretty much the same deal. Whereas it's easier to do that effect with the 7 to 14, because going from 7 millimeters to 14 millimeters, you're still gonna get a nice, decent framing. With the 12 to 32, it's somewhat of a different deal though. All you gotta do is reach for the zoom ring and zoom in. Aesthetically, you might not be pleased with what you're getting from the 32 millimeter tele end. Might be too close for you. So if you wanna go from 12 to like, and 18, you're just gonna have to do that movement over and over and over again until you know what it feels like to go to 18 just from touching and turning the zoom ring. Now something else that Neistat really likes to do and uses as a tool to enrich the narrative quality of his vlogs is framing himself in a shot and pointing at stuff. Now of course the selfie screen of his setup allows him to perfectly do just that. You just check back with yourself in the selfie screen and then just start pointing. Now with the G7, pretty much the same deal. The 12 to 32 on its 12 millimeter wide end is still decently wide enough to make that happen. But of course the 7 to 14 at 7 millimeters will enable you to point at a lot more stuff. Some quick thoughts on image stabilization. Most of the time, Neistat, having used his 70D setup, used the 10 to 22 hourglass from Canon, which doesn't come with image stabilization, and it never hurt his vlogs. The whole vlog type fashion of shooting actually doesn't rely on image stabilization, but of course, if you're trying to get really smooth and steady shots, image stabilization will help that a great deal. Now from the two lenses I'm using with the G7, only the 12 to 32 comes with image stabilization which in its case is Panasonic's own Mega OIS. Now the 7 to 14, although it's an $800 lens, actually doesn't come with image stabilization. Then again, not having image stabilization shouldn't be a deal breaker. Because when people watch your vlogs and you're shooting in a vlog type fashion, nobody's going to be interested in how well your footage is stabilized. Except of course you got shaky camera like this. Now one of the most important things when it comes to vlogging is autofocus performance. The 70D setup of course features Canon's own dual pixel autofocus. And paired with the silent stepping motor of the 10 to 18, this actually gives 
gives you an autofocus performance that quite simply leaves nothing to be desired. It's quick, it's precise, it's reliable, it's silent, and it still functions relatively okay in low light situations. So for vlogging, to put it simply, it's an awesome deal. With the G7, autofocus is kind of a double-edged sword. We gotta make a distinction between 1080p video mode and video modes below and 4K video mode. In 1080p video mode, autofocus performance is quick, precise, though not as reliable as the 70D's dual pixel autofocus. Autofocus noise in 1080p video mode with both lenses is loud enough to be picked up on the internal mic. But of course, if you're using external mics, none of these lenses will give you any grief regarding autofocus noise. Now in 4K video mode, autofocus speed is slowed down considerably. Then again, autofocus noise is pretty much not there. Both lenses are almost focusing silently. Now a problem you're gonna encounter with both these lenses on the G7 is what's called focus breathing. These are slight movements of the focal plane, which are apparent especially when vlogging and the camera is turned to face tracking mode. Your face is just gonna go in and out of focus a little. It's not terrible, but they are visible, so it's not good either. So focus breathing, although it's not terrible with the G7, really is a downside when compared to the performance of the 7 d dual pixel autofocus system. Now next to autofocus performance, audio quality is one major factor. Now Nystad has always used directional microphones with pre-gains, which will in return give you very decent audio quality. And also because of the directional quality of these mics, they will do a very good job in picking up your voice when you're talking to the camera and for the most part excluding surround sounds. Now the G7 of course, featuring a hot shoe mount, is perfectly able to accommodate any kind of shotgun mic so I'm using the same Rode Video Mic Pro and since the internal pre-gain of the G7 is actually better than that of the 70D using a directional microphone with a plus 20 decibel pre-gain allows you to camera internally level down the audio to a full minus 12 decibels which will pretty much kill all hissing. Now when it comes to low light performance in 1080p video mode both cameras perform well with the G7 having the upper hand and the higher working ISO but of course the G7 can pull a trick the 70D can't. It can shoot in 4k and later downscale to 1080p which will allow for the use of higher ISOs because the downscaling takes care of much of the noise. When you're looking at the overall possible quality, the G7 is actually far ahead of the 70D. Then again, 4K video mode with the G7 means slower video autofocus performance. So for time lapses, it's great to shoot in 4K and downscale to 1080p, but for vlogging, it's not a good idea because the G7's contrast detect autofocus system struggles in low light as it is, so slowing down autofocus performance isn't a good idea when vlogging in low light situations. Time lapses are of course prominently featured, and you can do time lapses with both these cameras because none of them have overheating issues, but if you want to do time lapses with the mind of a photographer, the G7 actually comes with a dedicated time lapse mode that will allow you to comprise time lapses of stills pictures, enabling you to do time lapses you couldn't do with a 70D. For example, going low shutter speed and blurring movement. Now to finish it up, video modes, the 70D shoots regular high quality 1080p footage, with the G7 of course you get in 4K and 1080p 60. Now to conclude this video, some personal thoughts on the G7 and vlogging. I don't think the G7 is a great vlogging camera. Autofocus performance just isn't good enough for it to be called that. I think though, it is a good vlogging camera. Still, using it only for vlogging, in my mind, doesn't make all that much sense, because it's just too feature rich and too capable of doing all kinds of videography for it to be used for vlogging only. So if you're a beginning vlogger, might I recommend you to not get the G7. It's probably not gonna make you happy, because this is just not a camera you can turn on, shoot in full auto and expect it to deliver the best results it can. So when using this camera, you always have to think. Whereas when you're a beginner, and especially if you're a vlogger, what you need is a camera that you can pretty much turn on, shoot in auto and expect it to deliver the best results it possibly can, which is something that just doesn't fly with the G7. But if you're interested in all kinds of videography and a camera that you can all also vlog with, then the G7 is actually a great pick, especially considering its price point. Because it is a very, very good piece of equipment, it is very feature rich and very much a video centric camera that you can do almost everything with and get really great quality out of it. And if you're willing to accept that with the usage of this camera there's a learning curve involved, then you might consider getting this device because it's a pretty good camera. If you liked the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it'd be greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. In any case, as always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in another video. Die Mädels, die sind alle betrunken und die sind alle schwanger, aber hey, uh, <laughs> <it's> forever! <laughs> Vielen Dank. Kommt es, kommt es irgendwie auf YouTube? Wenn ihr möchtet. Was für ein Kanal kommt es? Tube Noob. Tech Reviews, Setups, Tricks. Was Kann ich mir das aufschreiben? Ich weiß nur noch ein Stift. Mutti kommt auch mit der Schau. Schau. Ich gesagt, nur gucken. <lacht> <lacht>
Hallo, meine Haare sind hier. Ja, hier kommt ja. Uh, Ich grüße Mutti und, und Anna, mein Bräutigam. Ich grüße dich. Schatz, ich liebe dich. Schatz, ich grüße dich. War super. Komm, Annette, ich nehme oh, dir mal an. Ja, danke, danke. Und bitte gehen wir uns auch.